to jump straight into these Marvin Bagley rumors again. You no, know, last year you guys wanted Sadiq Bay. We said no. Right. <laughs> um, I kind of wanted to wonder: has like the market for him gone down, or do you think it's still like I don't know? Maybe you guys are looking for a certain player. Is it draft picks? What do you think the Kings uh, would want for a Marvin Bagley trade? I'll say this: if the market was down back when we were talking about it, the market has gone even lower. Kind of like when you're like, well, it can't get any lower. Well, damn, it got lower because of all of the drama-filled scenario that he puts himself into a lot of it is his dad his team right team Bagley uh he's very easily influenced which is a bad thing a lot like how Lando was influenced with our ball for a while and then he was like I'm my own man I'm gonna do my own thing I'm gonna separate myself from the from the brand for a little bit and later in life when I'm mature as a man you know I'll come back help you guys out shout out whatever and Bagley's going through that stage where he's like in the middle like he he wants to be a good teammate like he still cheers his teammates on his, like, he's, like, in the eyes of, of the public, he's still doing his thing. But then when Coach asked him if he'd get games to go, to go into a blowout against the Suns, he said no. And then when he said no, the Kings won the run, and they cut the lead down to, like, two or three points. And I, I'm pretty sure he <laughs> wished that he had gone back and gone into that game. He didn't. That was all over the news, national news. And that's really hurting his image, his brand. And I feel like a lot of teams, organizations like the Pistons are like, uh, well, he just doesn't want to be there. I agree. He obviously has checked out. He doesn't want to be here anymore. Is he a talent? Yes. But I've always said this. There are a lot of talented players in the NBA. This is the best of the best. I feel like they oversold us on the second jump. Is it great? I don't think so. I think it's good. I think a lot of other players at his side, like say a Metu, who was drafted in that same draft class. I, I don't know what he was, 49, I think, to the Spurs. He's more athletic to him. And I'm not even like Capron. Like, he is more athletic than him. He's working harder. He's, he's now started the last two games. I've always said, if you give this guy 25 minutes, yeah, he's going to put up 14-7. Like, a lot of the Bagley supporters are, well, he put up 14-7. I mean, he, I don't know why he would tweet this out, but Mark Spears from ESPN, I don't know if you saw it, he deleted the tweet right away. Yeah. He was like, well, uh, it was it was an embarrassing tweet. Let's just call it the way it is. And I'm friends with Mark Spears. So he took a jab at Dave Yeager, who we all know, national news, he's dealing with back and neck cancer. Uh, God mm -hmm. bless him. Uh, hopefully he's better. And, but that tweet had no place anywhere. It's kind of like he had an agenda. Like if he's working for Team Bagley, like the tweet was just random and weird. Like why would you tweet that, right? Um, and he did, and it just made it seem like the same argument for a lot of Bagley lovers is, oh, he averaged 14 and 7. Like, if that's some grandiose type of thing, like, a lot of guys can do that. Like, Metz has yeah. been doing that with 25 minutes a game, so it's not even, like, that impressive to me. And, and I hope that if he does go to the Pistons, which is a huge possibility, that he gets playing time to prove himself, but he's at the at the mindset where – for example, Josh Jackson, mm -hmm. I knew he'd be a bust before he even stepped on the court. But now he's accepted his role. He's accepted who he, who he is, and he's played well for you guys. But coming yeah. off the bench at times, but just, just you know, putting your ego aside, like, yeah, I was a top five pick, but it's okay. Other guys are better than me, you know, and I'm just going to be a good teammate, play, be a professional, play my role. And that's something that Bagley will ultimately need to understand. I rambled a lot about a lot of different things. I don't know what you want to touch on, but Marvin Bagley, to me, needs a fresh start. The Pistons is the right organization for him. You guys have had some success the last two years with your young players in terms of development. So I like what you guys are. I've been watching a lot of you guys' games. Obviously, you can take on your hand. But um, my question to you is, is Sadiq Bay on the table, or is that like a far-fetched dream? Uh, I think Sadiq, it would probably be off the table. So okay. you did mention him not wanting to check into the game. Now, we had a player right. do the same thing a couple of days ago, Hamadou Diallo. So Coach Casey asked him, hey, come into the game. And he, he's getting ready to come into the game, takes off whatever you want to call it, hoodie. Um, he's getting ready to check in. And then Casey's like, no, I don't like your attitude. Go take a seat. And then we have our GM, Troy Weaver, literally take him because that that's his guy that's who he traded for he's right. known him all the way back from when he was a sophomore in high school 
and they go to the locker room together. So there's a lot of drama with Hamadou Diallo right now. I think that is probably a guy that the Pistons would look to trade in a, a Bagley package. Like I said, I did see a couple of trades on SB Nation. I did want to run them by you. I have them on my phone. So mm-hmm. there's a couple different scenarios. I mean, like the last one, it's absolutely crazy. I do not think that'll ever happen, but let's get into it. But... <laughs> So this is a, a couple of trades that I did get from SB Nation. I don't remember what they're called. I think they're called the Royal Pain or something like that. So the first trade they had was Kelly Olenek for you guys. And this is before he did get hurt. Uh, we would get Marvin Bagley and a 2022 second round pick via Charlotte or Detroit. I love it. Is Kelly Olenek? I think, I think Olenek would be the perfect kind of like stepping into that Bielitsa role right at the stretch four mm-hmm. very smart basketball player um not a great defender but he's an okay team defender I would say obviously before he got hurt in that Rockets yeah. game which was super unfortunate and like like you said in your story business can't have nice things so I feel you on that no. the same sentiment here man yeah. so yeah I I would have adored that I liked a hell of a trade for the Kings this one would send Josh Jackson Trey Lyles and it's quite 20 Three second round pick in exchange for Marvin Bagley and Damian Jones. It's mm. interesting. Oh, I think Damian would be really good for you guys. Actually, he'd be the perfect backup um, to Stewart. And then the Kings would get who? They get Lyles. They get who else? Josh Jackson. I like that too. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like the Kings have depth at the at that position for the first time in terms of center. I do it. Yeah, I I do it. Yeah, I mean, when I, when I looked at that, I was like, I like Josh because he's from Detroit and he's he's playing so well. But I really like Bagley. I think it'd be a, like a seamless fit here because the only we, problem that I see with Josh, real quick, it's hard to pitch off, is that mm-hmm. Josh Jackson is a backup uh, wing. Mm-hmm. And then Mo Harkless is a backup wing, and that's still not really solving the issue for the Kings. Like the Kings need a starting caliber forward next to Harrison Barnes, and the only guy on this roster for the Pistons is Dick Bay and Jeremy Grant. Um, and obviously, I'm sure we'll touch on Jeremy Grant, but yeah. uh, it it gives the Kings more depth. But it's still, you know, Josh Jackson, Maurice Harkless; those guys are backups, and it's not their fault. It's just a matter that, you know, like, it's just the, the, it's just the hand of the Kings are dealt right now. So it, it doesn't solve an issue. In ter- it just solves like a – it's kind of like a Band-Aid, really. Like, it's, it's yeah. not solving an issue for the Kings. So this last trade, I think you would absolutely love. It is crazy. Uh, we get you guys Jeremy Grant. So you guys would get Jeremy Grant, Ronnie Magruder, a 2023 – First round pick uh, that is less favorable. We would get Marvin Bagley, Maurice Harkless, a 2022 first round pick lottery protected, and a 2023 first round pick swap more favorable. Done. What, what are we signing the damn paperwork? <laughs> okay. See, I, 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 thought you, I, I thought you were going to say Tyrese Halliburton. I'm like, no. Huh? No. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So we did. Oh, right. Okay, so where are you guys with Jeremy Grant? Obviously, last year mm-hmm. you guys asked for three first round picks with uh, with uh, Boston. Yeah, uh, I, I think they said no. Obviously, mm-hmm. um, he was having a hell of a season. I think he was putting up like what twenty five points a game. Yeah, his game has drastically improved since his you know time in Denver. I always talk about role optimization. There are certain teams that won't allow you to do certain things. And obviously, that's why he signed because he thought he was better than, than the role he was given. He has shown that. Like, the guy can create his own shot, which is always a plus in the NBA. He's still a decent defender, obviously, with more uh, touches offensively. The defense is going to go down, just logically speaking. Um, but on the Kings, like, he's not going to be your number one option. So he can no. kind of go back to that role in, 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 in Denver. But – drastically uh, optimized to still get up his own shots, especially off the weak side to where I just don't trust Luke, but why not give a bad coach another option to play with? Like, that's never a bad thing. So, you know, you put him in there. Um, 
I just think it, he's a seamless fit for the Kings. Like him and Harrison Barnes would be doing would be doing some damage for sure. Like I, I think Jeremy Grant is better than Aaron Gordon, and I mean that with with all honesty. Like I'm not a big AG fan. I think he gets a lot of hype because of the dunk contest, and yeah, you know, nationally speaking. But I genuinely think Jeremy Grant is better, and this deal makes you guys worse. But I understand it from your organization's perspective, which is to get Kate as many touches as possible, and then to clear up the cap space that would that would give the Pistons next season. And get some draft picks while right. we're at it, uh, even though there, there are protections on it. Now, as for where the organization is with Jeremy Grant, just from like what I'm seeing and like him being in the community and being so involved, this within Detroit, I mean, like he, does, he didn't have to move to Detroit, he did because he wanted to be in the city. But I think the organization still values him a lot because he's embraced the city of Detroit and he wants to be here. Now, do I think he's the number one option on a good basketball team, playoff basketball team? No, I don't. I think he's a number three at best, a yes. number three. I think he has the capability to be a number two if he keeps progressing and keeps developing because I think there's another level to his game. I don't think he's okay. done developing. Um, defensively, you know what he brings. Offensively, you know what he brings. Um, 35% uh, three-point shooter this year. It's not bad. I, I don't know. I feel like if they really wanted to pull the trigger on like, a trade like this, it would probably be for draft picks and, you know, trying to, you know, maybe clear his cap. Maybe they really go all in this summer because, you know, there's going to be a lot of good free agents this summer. Right. And we're going to – we have so much dead cap space, man. It, it's ridiculous. I mean, we got Blake Griffin. 28 million right. this year on the books, which is crazy to think about that we still have a, a roster constructed and we're paying Blake Griffin damn near $30 million. Um, Does Blake's contract come off the books after the summer or no? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to have a lot. So you have money. We're going to have a lot of money this year to spend on free agents. I don't know who we're going to get. I honestly don't, right. but. I don't really know if the plan is to go all in and try to compete, try to make the playoffs, or just make small, gradual, you know, strategic moves and kind of, you know, develop more of us like slowly. But I mean, so would you take Marvin Bagley, Tristan Thompson? So they're both expiring deals. Mm -hmm. Two first-round picks for Jeremy Grant. I would, but I'm not Troy Weaver. <laughs> Honestly, man, like, I, I love expiring deals because, like, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It, it's like, like, if we trade for Bagley and it doesn't work out, I'm not sweating about it. I'm not paying him $11 million. Right. I'm million. Sure, I'm sure another team might take a flyer on him. Who knows if they need a big man. But So would you be okay with those picks being top, top 14 protected or no? I would probably do one protected and then one unprotected just because I, I, I have a feeling you guys are going to be around that like 10 to 30. Yeah, I, I feel like if we get Jeremy Grant for Tristan Thompson and Marvin Bagley, that's literally adding a player and not subtracting any talent. Like, let's be honest, you're going to get better just just because Yeah, the Kings are a playoff team to me. Like, I think Jeremy Grant takes himself because they're that's what they're missing so now you can move maurice harkless to the bench where he belongs and he can give you those 10 to 15 minutes and jeremy grant and harrison barnes like that duel that are going to play 30 to 35 minutes a night so that's how i see it and it just gives for holmes you know more length on the perimeter yeah as opposed to his guys getting beat but you put jeremy grant uh, davion mitchell uh, and then uh, an inspired De'Aaron fox obviously Biggest criticism is that he's not always inspired, but when he wants to play defense, I mean, the guy's a monster. So uh, yeah. it's just one of those things, right?